Hello everyone and let's work on one more example where we need to use integration by parts but this time several times and this is the example of recursive integrals. So I will be using IBP integration by parts twice here and when I do that I will go back to the original integral I started with. How do I know that this is the case of recursive integral? Let's see what I have. I have a product of exponential function and sine or cosine. Usually that's the one. That's the one you know that you'll have to do in initial if you have to do integration by parts several times to go back to the whatever you started with. Because when you differentiate or integrate exponential function, it gives you exponential function, basically itself, times or over some kind of constant. When you differentiate sine or cosine, it gives you cosine or sine, plus or minus, times or over some kind of constant. That means if I do it many, many times, at some point, I will go back to the whatever I started with. Let's do it. I know this is a long problem and too many soldiers have fallen during this uh, work because it's very hard not to make a small mistake. So let's try our best not to make any typo and you let me know if I mess up at the, in the process, yell very loudly. So for the integration by parts, I first need to choose what to my u should be. And I'm going to use a rule li ate, which tells me choose whatever you see first. Logarithm function, then choose that to be u. I don't see any in my example. Inverse function like arc sine or arc cosine, not really. Algebraic function, x squared plus 5 and so on, I don't see any. I see trig and exponential function. Since trig goes first, I will choose sine to be my u. So this is going to be my u, then everything else will be dv, that's not a choice anymore. And I can fill in the table. My u is sine of 6x. My du is 6 cosine of 6x. Did you catch up with the chain rule I just did? You do first derivative of sine, that's cosine, and then times derivative of the function inside, which is 6. Don't forget the x at the end. dv is e to the 5x dx. Integral of that is copy. And then when you do chain rule, when you differentiate, you do times derivative of the exponent, which is 5. Since we're undoing chain rule, we're integrating. I will do over 5. Check out my video where I explain very nice shortcuts. This is one of my shortcut for integration some uh, very known functions like exponential functions sine cosine log and so on now from this visual table i remember that integration by parts tells me it will be u times v that's the diagonal ones and then minus integral of v du that's the bottom ones so the first integration by parts gives me sine of 6x times e to the 5x over 5. That's u times v part minus integral of v always repeats itself. So I'm going to copy e to the 5x over 5 again and then times du which is 6 cosine of 6x dx. Make sense? Now Integration by parts breaks uh, or under, breaks down the integral we have into a piece which is already integrated and hopefully a simpler one integral which we can integrate later. Basically, integration by parts was created to undo product rule. But unfortunately, the second integral is still challenging. It's still exponential function times a trig. So I will use an integration by parts one more time. But before doing that, I want to get rid of those constants, 6 and 1 over 5. I'll kick them out outside of the integral to make it look better. Now you can rewrite everything and I will just erase it here and over here. And I'll have 6 over 5 in orange in front of the integral, which is my second integral. Looks very nice. Now for the second integral, I will use integration by parts again using Li Ate rule one more time. 
So cosine now will be my u, and then e to the 5x and dx again will be my dv. Don't be afraid to reuse the same notation as u and dv for the second time. In some books, you can see that they recommend you to use u1, u2, v1, v2. I don't like it. I think it's make it more confusing. The moment we finished integration by parts once, u and v were used and they finished being used. So now I can reuse them again for the new notation. I don't see any problem with that. So my u is cosine 6x this time. Then du will be negative 6 sine 6x dx, right? Because the derivative of cosine is negative and chain rule still tells me to put 6 in front. To multiply by 6. dv is e to the 5x dx. v, using the shortcut again, copy, divide by the leading coefficient 5 over there. Close the brackets. That's my integration by parts second time. Integration by part second time tells me that now this integral in yellow over here will be broken into two pieces, but there's still part in front of it, right? So let's not to forget to copy everything in front. I have sine of 6x e to the 5x over 5 minus, don't forget the orange part, which is 6 over 5 in front. Then I will open huge brackets and in green color, in green color, I will have integration by parts second times result. So I will open brackets. The diagonal product gives me cosine of 6x times e to the 5x over 5 minus integral multiplied the bottom guys gives me again e to the 5x over 5 is being copied one more time then there is a negative sign in front so actually I can change the negative well I will not change just to keep good notation for you negative 6 sine 6x parenthesis dx usually I change the negative sign in front of the integral right away and I'm talking about this guy this and this will be plus now so now your job is to carefully simplify everything and see why did we do that second time? Was it even helpful or not? So I will simplify everything, which means I'm going to collect all the constants together to see the total final view. So I will have to distribute the orange part 6 over 5 into my brackets. And also it's not just 6 over 5. Be careful. It's negative 6 over 5. So it becomes negative 6 over 25 because this 5 times 5 can be multiplied. Cosine 6x e to the 5x minus. So you see, interesting it minus and the minus gave me plus, but one more minus give me, gives me minus. 6 over, not 6 anymore actually, look at this interesting, I have 6 times this 6, that is 36, and I still have 5 over 5, that's 25, right? And then I have integral of e to the 5x sine of 6x dx. I think I did not lose anything, let's check looks good to me. Now, why did I do that? Let's go back to the beginning and copy this integral at the beginning. And I'll paste it here and compare with what we have now. This is what I have here. And this is what I got after doing integration by parts twice. Here it is. I just copy and paste it like this. And I can say this is my equal sign. So after performing integration by parts twice, I started with integral of e to the 5 sine of 6x dx. 
And now on the right hand side, I have integral of e to the 5x sine of 6x, right? So this is the same integral on the both sides. That's exactly what it means to have recursive integral. It repeated itself. So the idea behind the next step is to call this integral some kind of name. You can call it unknown variable x, but x is already used, so let's use something different. And the common notation is using capital I because of the integral. Let's call this integral I. Then it will be in two places, left-hand side and right-hand side. Then the equation becomes I equals. Now I will paste the right-hand side one more time. But instead of this integral over here, I have negative 36 over 25 I. And your job is to solve for I, right? Because the whole idea is, hey, find what this integral is, question mark. So if I'm going to solve for that I, it means I will find what this integral actually is. Now it's all not about integration anymore. It's about solving the equation where I is my unknown. I need to solve for I. To solve for i, I will move i to the left-hand side. I will have i plus 36 over 25 i equals, and everything over here, whatever stays on the right-hand side. I will copy and put it here. Make sense? So what I did was I took this i with the constant in front of it and move it to the left so it becomes positive. Now what I have here is either you imagine factoring out i, so it's going to be i parentheses 1 plus 36 over 25, or you just see that you're adding two i's with different uh, coefficients in front of it. It's like x plus 36 over 25x. What is that? Well 1 is 25 over 25, 25 plus 36 is 61, right? So actually left-hand side becomes 61i equals everything on the right-hand side. And the last step is basically divided by 61i equals 1 over 61 brackets, paste all the right-hand side one more time, almost done, and this is the answer. So I will put this in the box for you to show that this is actually the answer, because my i is the integral we ask you to find. The only thing is we kind of want you to simplify it a little bit, usually, and for this case, do you see any things you can factor out? And usually those things are, you can factor out e to the 5x. So let's do that. If I factor out e to the 5x from everywhere, I will have sine of 6x over 5 minus 6 over 25 cosine 6x. Not too bad. I also can see that sometimes you can simplify more and multiply everything by 25. Then it will give you even more simplified form. But uh, I don't think you have to do that. So check all the calculations. Seems to me everything is... Um, oh, I see, I see, I see. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I found a mistake. Okay. I see where the 25 is gone. Did you guys catch the mistake? I found it. I found it not too late. Here, I was telling you that 1 plus 36 over 25 oh, 36 over 25 is 61. Yes, but it's not 61. It's 61 over 25. I told you it's hard not to make at least a small mistake somewhere. And if you're honest, this is my third try to make this video. The first time I forgot to click the record button. And the second time I made the mistake at the very beginning. So everything was wrong later. It's fine. I think that's the learning process and actually teaches you to be very careful. Teaches you and teaches me as well. 
So over here, I will have times 25. And over here, I'll fix it in red color, times 25, times 25, because we multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Now the 25 can be simplified. So I will have one, you see what I'm doing? This 25 and this five gives you five, and then completely cancels out this 25. So on the right hand side, I will have six, and on the left hand side, I will have five. Now let's check my answer to make sure this is the one I have in my notes. And yes, it's exactly what I need to have. So this is my I. And just to make sure you understand, what did we call I? Sometimes uh, people even write down let. Sometimes people even have a very official note before using the I, they say, let's remember, I will use some kind of pink color to make it a side note. People say, let's I be, let, let I be the integral e to the 5x sine of 6x dx. Then, that's if you want to be very professional with your notes, so that the reader which will be reading your solution will not be confused with what this i is. So now we can go back and say, okay, we've solved it for i, and my i was the integral of e to the 5x sine of 6x dx. And it's exactly the one we asked you to solve for 5 in front, 6 in front here. Why is there brackets here? minus and then brackets over here yes now it looks good and this is the final answer was you able to do this example without making any mistake then you definitely did an amazing job if you did a couple of mistakes don't be upset go back and find a typo these recursive problems always takes time to do and so checks how careful you are with little notations and how careful you are with fractions and don't lose anything well, with some practice, you'll get better and better with this. And also, I would say it's a very interesting idea that instead of actually solving the integral using some kind of method, we make an equation which makes this integral to be unknown because it is repeated on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. You see the yellow part over here? And then instead of actually solving it, we just imagine this is the unknown in the equation. And solving for that unknown forgetting for a second that this unknown is the integral. That's a very cool idea, I think. Great job for watching!